developing something, I'm doing the boring work, like looking if everybody paid his fee, and if he didn't, I got to write him a letter. And also, I, I'm responsible for some legal stuff concerning the data of our members. And because uh, in Europe there was some change in the laws concerning handling the data, um, I had to read it anyway, and, and I was in the middle of reading this stuff, and so I thought I can offer a talk about the general data protection regulation. Um, okay, so let's start. If you're interested, here is uh, the link, but you just can Google OJ GDPR <laughs> EU if you are interested. OJ stands for Official Journal. There is also a multi-language view available. It looks like this, okay? If you go, if you Google this, what I told you, and then you can choose the, germ, uh, the languages here, and also Portuguese is available. Yeah? And then you can have it side by side in at most three languages if you are interested. Yeah? You just Google OJ, GDPR, EU, and then this is the first hint. So. This is a screenshot of the official journal. It looks like this. And first I was interested in the font because I liked it quite a lot. <laughs> and as you can see or not see, because it's not clear enough, uh, the font is called Albertina. Mm. Albertina, and I, I looked around in the internet because I, I was interested, interested if uh, I can get it somewhere or some similar thing, and uh, the EU Albertina, I could not find anywhere. I asked Her Herbert Voss, and he told me that perhaps it's uh, the usual Albertina added with some two or three characters special to the EU or so, but um, I could not find it anywhere. Yeah? But the font family is Albertina and it's quite expensive. And as far as I know, there is nothing similar on the font catalog. It's a pity because the font is really, uh, I like it because it's uh, dense. Yeah? <laughs> you can write a lot of stuff <laughs> on a small space. Okay, so um, what I did, found, uh, did find was a kind of visual guide if somebody is interested. It's a large file where they are commenting about how things have to look. Yeah? And um, well, to go more into detail, there is a regulation and there are two directives. Um, in your talk, I guess you had also directives. Yeah? Um, in, in this official journal, which I cited, it includes directives and regulations. Okay, and the, the directives, they concern criminal prosecutions or terrorist offense stuff. Uh, this is not uh, of concern in this talk. We are only interested in the regulation and the abbreviation comes here from general data protection regulation here. So what is the difference? A regulation is a binding leg legislative act and every EU country has to implement it, word by word. The directive is something that every country has to make its own legislation out of it. Yeah? Okay, and why was the GDPR introduced because before there was like Babylon. In the whole EU, you had uh, different le legislation and this caused some problems, of course, especially for the economy. Yeah? So one of the reasons for the EU bureaucracy developing the GDPR was the harmonization, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, so hurry up a little bit. Um, though it entered into force already in 2016, the date of applicability was uh, 25th May of uh, 2018, so about two months ago. And so in the days before, there was really a lot of activity. <laughs> For example, this one. This is some uh, tweet. <laughs> we are playing a new drinking game. <laughs> 
whenever an email comes along with updated privacy notices, you have to have a schnapps. So this is hard liquor. <laughs> Could someone pick me up and take me home at uh, 18.30? <laughs> so this was the case So in the days before. It is from the 22th of May. Yeah? <laughs> and it's like this was really like, like it was. This is a, a, small, a small part of my mailbox. Yeah, <laughs> only of uh, two or three days, but, but I mean, I had hundreds of them. Mails from companies informing me about what data they have of me, and this was quite interesting because there were companies where I, uh, I added my stuff 15 years ago only once. <laughs> yeah? This uh, was really informative because there I, I got to know who has uh, my data still. Yeah, uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah it was uh, kind of interesting. Huh? And then... <laughs> Uh, let's get back to the law. <laughs> the OJ starts with uh, 137 so-called uh, recitals. I never heard this word before. In German, it's Erwägungsgründe. Yeah? And the first one is... Yeah. <laughs> but I, I looked it up because I'm no lawyer. Yes? This is a recital is something from from singing or so, from church <laughs> singing. But <laughs> it's really called... They, they are kind of what what they thought as a fundament for bringing up this. Yeah? For example, the first one is the protection of natural persons in relation to the processing of personal data is a fundamental right. Or what I really like, the fourth, um, the processing of personal data should be designed to serve mankind. <laughs> <laughs> not the economy or something, but <laughs> mankind. And, well, this is not uh, too precise yet. <laughs> Before uh, going more into detail, when writing this, I asked myself how to cite those, uh, those recitals. What I found uh, was this. Well, you cannot read it, but it's uh, here. I, I, I give the slides, and if you are interested, you can look it up. It's a kind of detailed information how you got to, to, t to cite this OJ. And it's really funny because... No, it's not here either. So a basic citation should look like, look like this, yeah, blah, 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 blah. And then you write 2016, OJ, and then this is, I don't know what, and this is uh, the page number. Yeah? <laughs> and when citing legislative acts of the council, then you also have to add council regulation, blah, blah. So it should really, every citation should be like this long. Yeah? I don't follow this. Uh, in this talk, <laughs> I guess you are okay with that. So the next one is, but what is, <laughs> like, <laughs> what I really was wondering is, perhaps you noticed or you didn't because you didn't look into the, uh, the details, that at, at the first page, yeah, they write this. Yeah? <laughs> so the paper is, uh, is writing number two, 2016, 679, <laughs> but the citation should be like this. <laughs> yeah, and here also on, on this, they write, they don't know why. Yeah, the blue book offers no explanation of this, but it's like it is. Yeah? <laughs> now, here's the proof that uh, the GDPR indeed does serve mankind. <laughs> I have another tweet for you. So, GDPR is when you are suddenly kicked out of any newsletter, <laughs> <laughs> something you have never managed to accomplish on your own before. <laughs> now, because if they don't get your consent explicitly, then they are not allowed to hold your data and do anything with it. And if they continue to write newsletters, then you can um, call, make a law suite. Yeah? Okay, so let's go on. The recital four. The right to the protection of personal data is not an absolute right. It must be considered in relation to its function in society and be balanced against other fundamental rights in accordance with the prin principle of proportionality. This is relevant, e.g. for Dante taking photos of persons on conferences and including them in the Technische Komödie. This is the German version of the tugboat. On the one hand, photos are personal data, so we should ask everyone and get written consent to being allowed to take photos and include them in our articles. On the other hand, our conferences are of public interest, so we don't have to ask if we take a photo of someone during a talk. But we cannot 
include a photo of somebody in the evening drinking beer, because this is not part of the public interest. Public interest. Yeah? And then there are, <laughs> there are situations where you need a lawyer to decide, <laughs> because you are not sure. Yeah? Okay, so. What is the gift of uh, drinking beer? Yeah, you can, have, uh, you can get a written consent of everyone. Yeah? But uh, I mean, let's wait and see, because Tuck is also concerned. But before this, something funny again. This was hanging on a large <laughs> beer festival in Germany. We have those beer events. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> So should I read it? Uh, should I read it aloud, <laughs> or did you read it by yourself already? <laughs> so if none are left, use a lipstick. Okay, let's go on. Question: Does uh, the GDPR apply to German TAC members, or more precisely, does the TAC office have to comply with the GDPR when it handles personal data such as addresses or names of TAC members who are EU citizens? No. See here, Article 2, Material Scope. This regulation does not apply to the processing of personal data in the course of an activity which falls outside the scope of union law. But, yes. <laughs> See here? <laughs> Territorial scope, and this is something uh, the TAC board, uh, I, I advise you to read it carefully. <laughs> this regulation applies to the processing of personal data in the context of the activities of an establishment of a controller or processor in the union, regardless of whether the processing takes place in the union or not. And the second one, this regulation applies to the processing of personal data of data subjects who are in the union by a cold controller or processor not established in the union where the processing activities are related to the offering of goods or services irrespective of whether a payment of the data subject is required to such data subjects in the union or <laughs> the monitoring of their behavior as far as their behavior takes place within the union, blah, blah. Article 3.1, this is this here, <laughs> applies when there is a TAC conference in the EU. Yeah? If uh, the next TAC conference is in the EU, you have to adapt all this terrible stuff. <laughs> and 2A, is this is this one, okay? You are offering services to EU citizens because I can get access to the electronic or online version of the TAC boat. Yeah? And so the GDPR applies for European TAC members, in my opinion. I'm not a lawyer. I advise you to ask somebody. <laughs> also, I would say the same for sending any thing, thing physically on the EU address. Yeah, it's so only... So, oh. <laughs> so let's go on. Uh, so what is personal data? What is personal data? I, I guess I skipped this. Interesting is, all, uh, yeah, I mean, personal data is the names and the addresses and the bank account stuff. But uh, more interesting is this is an online identifier. Yeah? What should this be? Email yeah, uh, no. An email address is, uh, yeah, also, but uh, let's have a look. Um, the GDPR does not formally define what an identifier is. Yeah? Online identifiers can leave traces which, when combined with unique identifiers and other information received by the servers, can be used to create profiles of data subjects. So it's nearly everything. <laughs> look here. Yeah? I, I will not go into detail here. Yeah? But when you have uh, devices, uh, protocols, IP addresses, cookies, RFIDs, yeah? and they say this is among others online identifiers. They don't specify it, but it's nearly everything which can make it possible to identify a person if you get other information and combine it. So IP addresses are <laughs> Personal data. Okay. 
When you are hosting a web page in the EU, you have to inform the visitors about the online identifiers that are used by your web presence and what data you collect from them and for what purpose. You will find an example for this on XKCD privacy policy. If you are interested, it's number 1998. We've updated our privacy policy. This is purely out of the goodness of our hearts <laughs> and has nothing to do with any hypothetical unions on any particular continents. Please read every part of this policy carefully and don't just skip ahead looking for sex scenes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't read everything aloud, yeah? so you can, you can have a look at it. But like here, this is your personal information. Please, send, uh, please don't send us your personal information. We do not want your personal information. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a hard enough time keeping track of our own personal information, let alone yours. If you tell us your name or any identifying information, we will forget it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> the next time we see you, we'll struggle to remember you, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> then this is, these are the online identifiers. The website places pixels on your screen in order to form text and images. Some, because you have to inform, yeah? <laughs> this is because you have, uh, if you have a web page, you have to inform the visitor what you are doing with uh, his data. Yeah? And so this is what they say. We, uh, yeah? may remain in your memory after you close the page. We use cookies to enhance your performance. Our website may use local storage on your device if we run low on space on our end. We may use beacons to call Rohan for it. <laughs> Third-party extensions. This service may utilize third-party extensions in order to play the song Can You Feel It from their debut <laughs> album Alive, permission, for users who are citizens of the European Union, we will now be requesting permission before initiating <laughs> organ harvesting. <laughs> scope, scope and limitations. This policy supersedes any applicable federal, state, and local laws, regulations, and ordinances, international treaties, and legal agreements that would otherwise apply. If any provision of this policy is found by a court to be unenforceable, it nevertheless <laughs> remains in force. <laughs> This organization is not liable, and this agreement shall not be construed. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This website is intended to treat, cure, and prevent any disease. <laughs> if you know anyone in Europe, please tell them we're cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so again, something. Ernest, <laughs> what is processing? Um, well, this is, this is what is processing. Yeah? They, they are defining everything, and so what is processing? They don't leave it open, but they make a list. For those who are interested here, uh, I, yeah, no one can read it. <laughs> this is in Portuguese, yeah? but it's a lot of stuff. Yeah? And if the English is not good, I had to look after what is retrieval. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know. Yeah? But this is the list what processing is. Yeah? And if you are doing anything of it, yeah? Then you've got to inform the user, we are doing this and this and this and this, and you've also, you have to inform the user why this is necessary for the serv service you're offering. Yeah? Uh, but yeah, yeah, erasure. You cannot yeah? erase data without permission. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. The lawfulness of processing is the Article 6. Processing shall be lawful only if and to the extent that at least one of the following applies. The data subject has given consent. The other ones, I, I don't go into them now. Ah, so uh, yeah? on the previous slide, C allows you to erase this information even without consent. Mm. Uh, yes, but you have to inform the user that you do it. Ah, yes. uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so I have to give consent, yeah? and, uh, yep. and there is a, a lot of exceptions or other, uh, like, uh, yeah, don't care. So next one, consent, conditions for consent. I brought you something funny again. 
So this is a DSGVO, German abbreviation for the General Data Protection Regulation. Attention, at our butcher shop, we sometimes... <laughs> 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 At our butcher shop, we sometimes ask for your name and remember your preferred type of meat. I don't know how it is in Brazil, but in Germany and the south part where I come from, yeah, we have these small, small butcher shops and they know you. And they know that most of the times you buy the same meat. Yeah? And it's like, it, it's, it's, it's a good thing that they know what you like and you, you are standing in the aisle. I make it ready for you. Yeah? So, we will remember uh, your preferred type of meat. If you object to this, please shout on entering our premises. I disagree. We will from then on pretend to not know you. Uh, the background on this is that, for example, if you are a vegetarian or if you don't like um, pig meat, yeah? so uh, that this could be uh, some data which, which is um, in a special category, yeah? preferred food stuff uh, could tell some NSA that you are a terrorist because you, you don't like pigs or so. Yeah? And so it's not, not really no problem to give somebody uh, your, your food preference. OK, so the conditions for consent, oh, well, what's this? We'll skip it. Yeah? <laughs> you can read it if you want <laughs> later. Yeah? So what rights uh, do, does the data subject have? Yeah? Um, you have the right to get information, more interesting, without undue delay. So if you are writing to Facebook, what do you have kind of data of me? Then they cannot wait for half a year and say, ah, we don't have the personnel. Yeah? They have to react and they, they have to do it yeah? without undue delay and also free of charge. Yeah? They cannot say it costs 100 euro or whatever, they have to do it suddenly and free of charge. And you can, you can, yeah. You have also the right of the access, so you can ask for the confirmation whether or not they have data. Yeah? So even if they don't have, they have to answer that we don't have data of you. And if they answer this and later you get a newsletter, <laughs> then you, you can uh, call a lawsuit. Yeah? Okay, and what is really interesting is this here. The ex existence of automated decision making. Because in, in Germany, for example, but not only there, um, if you get a credit, um, the, uh, the banks, or so they, they are calling different providers of information about uh, can you have a credit or not. And uh, it often happens that there are um, some data which is quite old or is really wrong. For example, I, I, I had some, some uh, paper thing that I wanted to do and then I, I could not do it and they told me I, I, I could not find out the reason and uh, I mean I don't had any criminal stuff in my life before yeah? so I, yeah, I can ask why, why didn't I get the credit and they have to, to inform you and in Germany before this you had to pay a lot of money if you wanted to get this information yeah? and also there are uh, different companies who offer such kind of services and you you, you have the right to get the information from them where they got this data. Huh? So, so these are really the rights of the, of the data subject which, which uh, serves mankind, really it does. Yeah? I have the right to get this information and they cannot just not react or react in half, uh, after half a year or so. Yeah? You, you have really uh, good means to, to force them to, to comply. Okay. So in addition, the data subject has the right to rectification and the right to erasure. Yeah? So if you want somebody to, to get <coughs> rid of your data, they have to erase it. And if they don't, and you still get newsletters, then you can call a lawsuit. Okay? So uh, representatives of controllers. When uh, Article 3.2 applies, the controller shall designate in writing a representative in the union. This article was introduced among other things because there have been some cases of fake news on Facebook that the affected persons wanted to be deleted 
but Facebook had no official representative in the EU. And if the data subject contacted the non-EU contact provided by Facebook, the answer was that they were not responsible for incidents in the EU. Yeah, so uh, the, the last years it was really complicated yeah, to, to uh, getting uh, Facebook and Twitter and, and these non-EU companies uh, to react because they say we, we don't have anybody in the EU, we are not based in the EU and this doesn't concern us and uh, this uh, politician, uh, she, she wrote to Facebook and they didn't react for weeks or so. Yeah? And uh, now they have to have somebody <coughs> written, which you can contact, and uh, they have to react in a short time. Uh, and this was not the case before 25th May. Do you remember the Sony hack? Somebody of you? Uh, yeah. uh, uh, this was not the only case where the company was hacked, but did not immediately inform the users. And I, I'm not sure, but in the case of the Sony hack, there were also bank account uh, information and so was hacked, yeah? and this is really something you have to be informed about it, yeah? because you have to change your password, yeah? and they didn't do it. And uh, this uh, happened more than once in the last years, that there was hacked personal data with credit card information, but they didn't inform because they said, if we go public, this is bad for our reputation and so, yeah? and. Uh, the GDPR Article 34 deals with this. Yeah? When the personal data breach is likely to result in a high risk, blah, 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 the controller shall communicate the personal data breach without undue delay. Yeah? This again means if they don't, then it can get expensive. Now to the interesting part. What is a co if a company does not comply? There is a chapter uh, eight, remedies, liability, and penalties, Article 77. Um, right to lodge a complaint. Yeah? I have the right to lodge a complaint with a supervisor authority. The supervisory authorities um, are created in every country. I don't talk about this now, but there is uh, such an authority where you can go to in every EU country. Yeah? And there is a general, this is the last slide, general conditions for imposing administrative fines. Infringements of the following provisions shall be subject to administrative fines up to 10 million euro, or in the case of an undertaking, up to 2% of the total worldwide annual turnover of the preceding financial year, whichever is higher. Yeah? <laughs> so these are not peanuts. Yeah? And then these are, are, these are infringements, and then you have the non-compliance with an order by the supervisory authority shall be subject to its double. You see, 20,000 euros or 4% of the total world wor wor boop, worldwide annual turnover of the preceding financial year, whichever is higher. Okay, so this was a walkthrough. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> enjoyed it. And now I'm, I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Um, comment really, as, the per as I'm the administrator for UK Tug and therefore have worried about this. Okay. Um, there's a lot, a lot of the rules have exceptions for membership or, or for where you have to have the data to carry out functions and so for example membership of organisations would be exempt from much of GDPR because you have to have that data in order to, people have volunteered when you join an organisation. Yeah, but you have to get consent. No, 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 you don't, because they've, if, if they've act, chosen to join something, it's a necessary part of that. Yeah, but the then, so there are then, exceptions. then you have uh, on the, joining, on the joining paper, yeah. you have to inform. Yeah. yeah. So you have to write about two pages, yeah? and there it's including that uh, consent is... But so if, if, you, if you are joining, then you are giving the consent, but you have to inform what you are doing with the data. Not exactly, no, because it's a necessary part of carrying out your... Oh, no, no, so it does, if it's a necessary part of carrying out what someone's done, then you'd have exception. It, it's more complicated there, but my, at least my reading of it from what the UK authorities put out is that for things like membership of organisations, 
you don't have to have additional consent because people in joining something have actively, you know, if you, act, if you chose to join an organization, you have to give them your name, for example. You can't do yes, it. Yes, exactly. But you have to inform the one who joins what else you are doing with this name. Yeah, if you do anything else, yeah, but the only thing yeah, but then you have to write, I only am saving it uh, for address purposes or so. Yeah? But if, if you don't need an email address, then you are not allowed to have it. Mm -hmm. huh? So you, you, you can only get this data that you really need to have. Okay. Yeah, sure. huh? Well, it's uh, of, of course very complicated, but the basic idea is that really people have to know what you do with their data. So if you told them when they registered, then you are okay. You could have told them 20 years ago, and that's okay, it's fine. If you have never told them, then now you have to tell mm -hmm. them. That's the important thing. So, the so old if you cases, told them at huh? the time of registration what you... Yeah, yeah the old cases are not concerned. Yeah. yeah. What? The old cases. Yeah, yes, but yeah. users you have and have never been informed about how you, deal, how you treat their personal data have to be informed at ah. this moment. Ah. That's the important thing. So even ah. existing users are affected, of course. That's the important thing to note. Okay. Uh, I'd like to thank Doris. Um, this meeting here is only possible because of a grant from Dante. And, uh, and so I'm glad to know who's the bookkeeper. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>